Alright, so I've got a couple questions from people on emissive materials, which isn't something I use too often, but I just wanted to cover how you would go about making um, a material that would light up a scene. Um, right now I'm in Rhino 5 with V-Ray 1.5, but further in the video I'm going to jump over to Rhino 4 with V-Ray 1, because I believe they work differently. Uh, so here I just have a V-Ray infinite plane, and I got that from clicking this button here. I'm going to make a box. And we have our box. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just go into my camera options, um, V-Ray options, sorry. And I'm going to load uh, my standard GI IR map medium. Uh, with that in place, we can jump in and see that under environment, there's already a skylight on. And I'm going to turn that off. So now, right now, if we render, we should see nothing. Uh, it's a pitch black scene. Uh, the next thing I need to do is come back into my options and just make sure that my my output is the same size as my window. So I'll get my aspect ratio, and I'll lock it, and I'll set some size. And now when I render, you'll see again, it'll still be black, but it will have the same aspect ratio of the window on the screen. Uh, so there, that's, that's all I really needed to do. There's default materials on the plane and on the box, but now I want to add uh, a light of some sort. So I'm just going to type sphere and draw a sphere. And holding control, I can just drag it up into the air and I have to create a material, an emissive material. So I open my material editor, right click, create a new material, let's say standard material, that's fine. I'm going to call this one light one. Uh, the color of this material doesn't really matter, it's going to be the emissive qualities of the light that we want. So I need to add that layer in. So if I right click my material and say create layer emissive, um, now, when I preview it, you can see it's it's white and it's glowing. Uh, so if I apply that to the sphere here, um, let's change the color just for to, to show off that it, it actually glows a certain color. So now it'll be a red light, and we can actually already start to see some faint hints of that in the, the preview here. So if I jump back into my scene and render, we can see we have a red glowing orb, but we're not actually casting any light onto the scene itself, which is fine. So back into the materials, uh, here we have the intensity. Uh, and I'm going to increase this intensity to say 30. And this is kind of a, a you have to check again and again to see uh, what intensity we need. Uh, for the scene, it really has to do with how much space and what units you're working in. For a very large scene, you might need more intense lights and lights more often than a smaller scene like the one I'm working in now. So with 30, you can see we get some red glow. Um, on one side of the box we can see the edge, that makes sense, and actually the red light is now uh, white. It's so intense that it's casting red light, but it appears white itself. Uh, let's see, so if we come back into the properties here, uh, we can also change the transparency. And let's see, if we make it, uh, in the diffuse, we make it completely transparent. Um, here in the emissive qualities, if we made this transparent, the light would actually disappear. So we need that to be black, which means it's opaque. Um, let's see if we have any other options here we can change. Uh, no, that's all we need. But you can see that we don't have too much light in the scene. Now, if we, if we amp this up and increase more and more and more intensity, it would start to illuminate the scene. Um, but I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think the best way is actually create multiple copies and create multiple lights. Uh, much like a house, you know, we don't have one single light that is incredibly bright that lights the entire house. We have more than one. So I'm going to duplicate my light and say light number two. And this is all I'm doing is just changing the color. So maybe we'll do like a blue color. So now when I come back in and render here, uh, actually it's still red. I must have misclicked something. Let's jump back in the materials and see if something got messed up. Light color blue. Hmm. Maybe I have to apply... Oh yeah, that's what I did. I didn't change anything. I have to apply this to that orb. So now I have red, red, and blue. And if we render this scene, we have that blue light here, red light on each side. Um, you can tell it's it's still kind of a little spotchy, uh, a splotchy. And one thing to consider is that in the environment, in the world, there is kind of ambient light. So if we jumped back into our environment tab and turn on a skylight, we can reduce it and say maybe there's just 0.5 power and render that. 
Um, and now we're going to have like a little bit of a generic haze. Um, we'll see what it, what it finalizes as. Maybe we need to turn that down even less. 0.5 might be too strong because we're losing the saturation of those lights. We're, we're lighting everything evenly with white, um, which helps illuminate the scene, but isn't doing too much for us. So let's jump back one more time, um, turn on the background light, and we'll drop this to 0.1, and let's see what we get now. So, so maybe it's a little better. This is also with the background light on, which uh, deals with reflections and refractions. Um, but this might be a more realistic approach to lighting the scene with emissive materials. Uh, so up next will be Rhino 4 with V-Ray 1. All right, so here in V-Ray uh, 1 with Rhino 4, we're just going to look at uh, subtle changes. Uh, I already have four lights in the scene. I have a box and an infinite plane. Under my V-Ray options, you can go File and Load. Um, it's exactly the same as before. I'm going to use my GI IR map medium settings. Uh, my not using a physical camera right now. Uh, typically, I would. I'm going to overwrite my viewport, get my aspect ratio, and lock it. Do just a small setting. Um, I'm going to turn off my skylight and my background so it's just the light in the scene. Uh, under materials, I'm going to right click and say add new material. I'm going to rename it, which is important to me because I'm compulsive. We'll call it light. Uh, then under this, I have to hit the plus tab and right click and add an emissive layer. And under my emissive layer, I can set my color, which before I did red, let's do pink, sure. Set my intensity to 30, which was what we were using before. We can preview it and it's showing up as white, it's fine. Uh, select these orbs. I'm going to right click and apply to the objects. Um, I'm going to move these down. I'll, I'll just hold control and, and pull them down into the scene. And now give it a quick test render. And there you go. It's exactly the same as before. Um, a little splotchy because of the, the lack of light. V-Ray when it doesn't have enough information. Well, it's really not too bad. You have a little bit here and here. Um, so adding more lights and increasing the intensity slightly or maybe going to kind of a strip or rectangular light would, uh, would create a little better illumination. Um, but that's how you would handle it in Rhino 4 with V-Ray 1. Uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. You can send me a message here on YouTube. Uh, if you like the video and it's helpful, you could like or subscribe to my channel. Or send me an email at c.k.mcadams at gmail.com. Hope it all goes well.